we're continuing. And today, God willing, we'll finish this uh, Hasidic discourse, which is found in the book Torah, or <coughs> very basic <coughs> book of <coughs> Hasidic philosophy and direction in um, from Chabad. And it's talking about the giving of the Torah. That's what this whole Torah portion that we're reading about in, the, in this week's uh, Chumash also. Giving of the Torah. So the Rebbe says, what happened when the Jewish people got the Torah? Not just that they got a set of laws. That's true. They did get a set of laws. And that they uh, and that God appeared to them. It was an amazing uh, religious experience and a unifying experience. All the Jewish people were all together. And it was basically the, 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 the bar mitzvah of the Jewish people. The bar mitzvah of the Jewish people. When the Jewish people got out of Egypt. That was the birthday of the Jewish people, birthday. And maybe we can say that when they went over Yam Suf, they went over the Red Sea, that was something like, let's say, the Brit, the circumcision, that it's, uh, the, the water split, split open, that the concealment was revealed. And I mean, even though it didn't happen on the eighth day, but seventh day. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm just making this up. I'm not saying that this is exactly so, but. That's not what it says in the Mimer, anyway. And the but the uh, the day of giving of the Torah, that's something like the bar mitzvah. The Jewish people got their bar mitzvah, even though other places it's compared to. <clears throat> I mean, actually, all the other places it's compared to a wedding. It's not, I've never seen it compared to a bar mitzvah, but I just made that up. <clears throat> Why not? So that's the idea of the giving of the Torah. It's the bar mitzvah. The Jewish. What's the what does bar mitzvah mean? And bar mitzvah means that you are now relevant to do the commandments. And the, but the word mitzvah also means connection. So in Mount Sinai, <clears throat> not only did they get this Jewish identity and the, and the book of Jewish rituals and the book of Jewish law, but they also got a connection to the creator of the universe. The creator of the universe. This is already, <clears throat> how do they call it? Far out. There used to be a word for it. What did they call it? They called it, uh, I, don't, I don't remember. Anyway, this is already really shaky. Here the Jewish people are claiming something that nobody else claims. All the other religions and, and philosophies and this, they have books <clears throat> and, and methods and practices and this. They have their books, which explain, <clears throat> you know, if you do certain things, then you connect your psyche to certain spiritual principles or realities or something like that. And here Judaism is saying that God, the creator of all these spiritual levels, actually appeared to all the Jews. <clears throat> how, do, how does it, where do we see that in the Bible? Well, first of all, it says that they heard God speak. And it says also that they saw the voices. Rowing at the Kolot. They saw the voices. What does that mean? They saw the voices. Maybe it's like a printing mistake or something. It should be they heard the voices, right? No, that's what it says. If you in the in the, in the Bible, the written Bible, the Bible scroll, if you see it written that they heard the voices, then you have a disqualified Bible scroll. The Bible scroll has every word, every letter is very exact, and if one word is missing or or printed improperly. How much more so has it changed? And so in the Torah, it says clearly that they saw the voices. Huh? And the, 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 the Talmud says that they saw what was heard, and they heard what was saw, seen. And the Lubavitcher Rebbe explains that what you, you, you hear about, that's something that's far away that you don't see. So they saw the things, the secrets of creation that you usually just hear about and on the other thing on the other hand <clears throat> the things that you see they understood deeply they understood this the, the physical they saw what was you right they saw what was heard and they heard in other words they felt the inner deep meaning of what was usually seen <clears throat> so what was concealed became revealed and what was revealed they saw the inside concealed part of it in any case it really got everybody moving. 
the Jewish people and God pulsating. <clears throat> we talked about that before. That's life. <clears throat> so he said, if so, that was the whole idea that the Jewish people, they received a tremendous life force from God. <clears throat> and that life force then went back up to its source again. And commensurately, the same thing happened with the Jewish people. They got this tremendous life force of God, which made them go backwards. And then when the life force went away, they had such a tremendous desire for it that they went forward. And then they got too close to God. So God and them are going back and forth with God. That's the pulsation <coughs> of life. It's called Ruts of Ashov. That's the whole secret of time, right? That God just can't keep pouring constantly life in the world because then it would be too spiritual. So God puts life in the world and then he takes it away and puts it back. That's the whole idea of pulse and breathing and going and coming back. That's life. That's what the Jews got in Mount Sinai. They got this dynamic living connection with the creator of the universe, something which is totally impossible, they got. And it is in the Torah right now. And we get it also. That same revelation, that same <clears throat> dynamic movement, that same, uh, how do you say, uh, living awareness is in the Torah. And anyone who learns the Torah with the proper attitude, Jewish person learns the Torah with a proper attitude. Non-Jews are not supposed to learn the Torah. They're not to learn. They can learn as far as what to, to understand the laws they have to do. But they're not supposed to bring all the different arguments and, you know, Rabbi, the, the, Rabbi, Rabbi Yochanan says like this and Rish Lokas says like this and maybe this is what it means. And then they have to learn the Talmud, not for the non-Jews. Okay. In fact, it's forbidden. It's forbidden. We'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> okay, so we got into a little bit of a difficult part here, and I want to, we'll skip over this. <clears throat> <clears throat> and he's he's talking about this whole movement of going back and forth, forth and back and life and, and uh, et cetera. This is, <clears throat> this is all aspects of God. But when there is the source of all these, this is the what's called kerach. We had all these Kabbalistic terms, so I don't really want to go into it too much. Asher, I'm sorry, Al Asher Al Rosha, which is on their head, not care. I skipped the line. Who call a shofar? That's the shofar. The shofar sound, that's the source of all of this going and coming back. The shofar sound, I've said the shofar comes from a narrow place. This narrow place is like the tip of the yud of God's name. This shofar that they heard, this is a different type of a sound. This is above, above, also from what's called the heavens. <clears throat> this is when the angels, it says when the Jewish people stand in prayer, or the angels, it says as tarifina kanafayam. Then it says that their wings, like in the vision of Ezekiel, it says that their wings are going up and down. That's a bird, right? It goes up and down. But it says that when there's this high revelation from the essence, then the wings they become limp. Shabbatal, the nichlal, gam bechinas haratzon. Then this desire of going closer to God and coming back, this is also <clears throat> subdued when there is the essence of God revealed. Gam bechinas hashuv, umiyuchedet biyichud gomer. Then everything is to totally united, and it's not called rotzon balat shuv anymore. So what's going on over here? What, what is the Rebbe saying? The Rebbe is saying is like this. This thing does not stand still. Why not? Okay. <clears throat> okay, God is the source of all life, right? God is the source of life. God existed 
the God existed. <clears throat> God's existence is a real existence, sort of. Sort of. God wanted to create this world <clears throat> so that in this world we give him the Torah, and when the Torah is given, then God gets pleasure from what we do. But what is God's essence? God's essence. <clears throat> Somehow or other, amazingly, God's essence reacts to what we do. It reacts to the Jews. When the essence of God is revealed, then there's revealed something that we have absolutely no conception of what it is. But it means the true inner deep reason why God is creating the world. It's not that the world will go away, everybody's just going to be basking in heaven or something. No. The true <clears throat> essence, real life idea, why God is creating the world, why God is creating time, why God is creating space, but most important, why he's creating people. And that's the whole secret of the Torah. When God gave the Torah, there was revealed, in addition to these <clears throat> sounds that came down and the fire that went up, there was also the shofar. And the shofar, somehow or other, the narrow part of the shofar, that that's the part that the one who sounds the shofar puts in his mouth, in this case, it's God doing it. This is narrow in the sense that it contains everything, like a seed. And this unites all opposites. It unites all being, because the fact is, is that God is one. God is one. There's nothing except for God. The world is not a separate entity from God. God is creating it all the time from nothing. But why is he creating it? And that's what's going to be revealed. <clears throat> that's what it means. Shalom, yase, shalom, li, shalom, yase, li. That's the idea of shalom. Shalom means uniting of all opposites. Peace doesn't mean death. Rest in peace. The person's now at peace. True peace means harmony. Uniting of all opposites. That's true peace. Right? Shalom doesn't mean like, you, like the, you know, the, the, the Genghis Khan or somebody, all these other people. They just conquer the whole world, then there's going to be peace. That's not so. Peace means that when everyone maintains their uniqueness, but nevertheless, they're all <clears throat> united in a common cause, like an orchestra playing beautiful music. And all the pieces are different. But when they're all playing this, the same song, is then there's what's, that's called shalom, that's harmony. <clears throat> there, so it says, shalom b'pamelia shalmayla the shalmat, it says that there's peace, in the <coughs> upper worlds, even though the angels, there's some angels like Michoel, that they're of water and, and the as aspect of God's love. There's angels which are like Gavra, which that's God's fire. That's God's severity. But nevertheless, they all get along together. And also, all the different creations that are in the world. <speaking in Hebrew> because the upper worlds and the lower worlds will all be complete. <speaking in Hebrew> just like it was in the narrow part of the shofar, so it will be also in the wide part of the shofar, the narrow part of God's shofar, that's God's essence, there of course everything is one, so it will also be in the wide part of God's shofar, which that's how it comes out <clears throat> the point of this whole business is that that's what the Torah is here for, the Torah is here to make peace in the world the Torah is not just <clears throat> that we should do God's laws and we know what to do and it keeps us busy. The Torah is God's will, God's wisdom, <clears throat> and God's essence. And when the Jews learn Torah and they learn it with the proper attitude, so this makes this essence revealed in this physical world. That's what we believe. That's what it means that all the Jewish people, they saw the voices that and the fire that call a shofar and the sound of the shofar. Kolot, these sounds 
that they heard. <laughs> this draws down, like it says, Kol Gashman, like a physical voice, a sound. Shu in Yin Hamshachas, Hahevel Mialev. A call is like a voice. Okay, the, the, the call means a voice. What is a voice? A voice comes from a wind from the heart. And it comes out through the mouth and you speak. That's what a voice is. The voice is the source of speech. <clears throat> so it is also and so drawing down the infinite light of God from the inner concealed source to reveal this is also called the voice so the voice of God that's like the source of creation and this was drawn down at Mount Sinai the source of creation was drawn into the world now what's the fourth of the ten commandments keep the Shabbat God created the world six days <clears throat> that's the that's the power of creation was revealed in the world. The kolot, when, when there's like an, they have this atomic bomb, they have, what is it called also? The hydrogen, the hydrogen bomb, the nuclear bomb, whatever it's called. That that releases a little tiny fraction of the energy that's in the world. A little tiny fraction of it is revealed. And you see this tremendous explosion that there is, that there can be. Well, imagine if you could reveal all of the energy that creates the entire universe. <clears throat> that, that's as you take, a, I don't know how much it is, but there's a certain quantum mass of this radioactive stuff. And somehow or other, they, they make this reaction. How much, how much radioactive stuff is there, right? A pound, a ton, I have no idea. But it certainly is not the you know more than ten tons, fifty tons, a million, a billion tons. How much does the Earth weigh? How much does Neptune weigh? You know, how much does the planets? How much does the Sun weigh? How much does the whole universe weigh? Take all of that energy and reveal it. That's, that's ridiculous. Well, that the whole example, the best example you could bring is absolutely nothing, because here we're talking about the energy that creates all the angels. It says one angel. Is three times as big as the universe. What that means, who knows? <clears throat> but the energy that reveals, and these are all just created from God's word, God's letters, the source, the God's voice, that was what was revealed in Mount Sinai. This is what's called a revelation from above to below. The source was revealed here in the world. Kolod, it says there were voices. What does it mean? Like it says, <clears throat> Zohar the Torah, Shenitam Bechamisha Kolod. It says the Torah was given with five voices. Him, hey, pamim, mayim. These are the five times water. Just like there are five times light, kuli. What this means, I have to admit that I don't know. There's, it's written, explained in a book by the Tzemach Tzedek, and I looked around, I couldn't find the book. Okay, anyway, take my word for it. Take the Rebbe's word for it. This is some sort of a Kabbalistic secret, which is the five times water, <clears throat> five times light, kuli. God willing, I'll look it up after the class. I'll try to tell you tomorrow. I hope I don't forget. So if so, these voices is the same thing as <clears throat> water being drawn down from a high place to a low place. This is what's called God's kindness. It comes down from a high place to a low place. That's what was revealed at Mount Sinai was the essence of the creative power of God, the essence of it, was revealed to the whole creation. Gileam Shechaz Oren Sof, namely the revelation of drawing down godliness in, and that revelation is right now with us in the commandments. Who would believe it? And in the Tanya, it says that why don't we see it? Because it's a good thing. If we would see it, we would totally lose it. We wouldn't be able to take the revelation. That's a lapidim, and the, okay, that, that's coming from above to below. Also on Mount Sinai, there were the voices we said that was from above to below, and then there was the torches, the fire. This is fire 
Bo'erit Kamari Alapidim. It says there was fire, the whole mountain was all fire. This was Ratsavichukamimatalamaila. This indicates a tremendous desire and a running from below to above. <clears throat> all the people saw this, the Hisigu Ayn Bayan, and they saw eye to eye the revelation of God. Roim at the Nishma, that's what it means that they saw what you usually can only hear about. Right here, we're reading in this in this mimer, we're reading about all these angels and these levels. We're, we're reading about it. We understand it. We don't see it. At Mount Sinai, they saw it. They saw what you usually can only understand. Nishma also means to understand. Also in English. Do you hear what I'm saying? <clears throat> right? Did you listen to that speech yesterday? Did you hear his speech yesterday? What do you mean, did you hear it? If, if he spoke in, in, in French or some language you don't understand, you didn't hear it. You hold, you heard a bunch of sounds. Nishma means to understand. <clears throat> and Mount Sinai, they could see what we can at best only understand. That means going from below to above. Hakal, Hayamipene, Kolesh, over. But all of this, the revelation of the voice of God, higher than God's word, the voice of God being revealed below, that's the voices. And the fire of God, which means going from below to above the desire, this all was a result of the shofar. That's what we said, going back and coming, pulsating. The sound of the shofar, this was the mezer. This came, this indicates the ultimate narrowness, the ultimate source of all, the makara tainugum, the source of all pleasure, the source of all life. And source of all the source of this voice that we talked about from it comes this water and also the fire shame of that all of them are opposites but when this shofar is revealed then it's all one and that's what it means that the mountain was filled with smoke in the ashen this is by means of or sometimes ashen it doesn't say that in this mimer, but Ashen is Olam Shana Nefesh. Olam Ayan means physical. Shana is time. Nefesh is spiritual. That all the aspects of creation, spiritual, physical, and time, which joins them together. That's what we said before, this idea of pulsating. It was all elevated at Mount Sinai. But he doesn't say that. He in Ashan, this smoke, that came up on Mount Sinai. So we see that what happened in Mount Sinai was an amazing, uh, an, an amazingly powerful, one of its kind revelation experience. But it's not exactly one of its kind. It's the, the one, the oneness of God. That's the one of its kind, the oneness of God, which there's nothing one like God, <clears throat> was revealed in this world, which the fact of the matter is, is that the fact that, that it's revealed is a, is a novelty, but the fact of God's existence is not a novelty. The world is the novelty. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> And everyone felt that the world is being created by the essence of God, and they felt the reason for it, the Torah. <clears throat> so it's not like some, you know, spiritual angel or something, you know, the, the, the visitation of the men from Mars, when right, this huge spaceship or something comes and is revealed in the world that it's a separate thing. It's not the separate thing. We're talking about the creator who's creating me and you, just reveal themselves to us. Obviously, if we exist, there must, the creator must exist even more. We just don't feel it. And at Mount Sinai, they felt it. And the Rebbe is now trying to try to get us to understand that when God reveals himself, it is a tremendously, can't think of a better word, that dynamic and, and, and volatile Situation, but at the same time, it's ultimate stability. It's the ultimate stability. The creator 
is infinite and he's creating us. We got nothing to worry about. He's the king of the whole universe. That's the ultimate stability. <clears throat> but it's just something that the world can't take. <clears throat> it's ultimate unity. That's the ultimate idea of peace. Peace. It doesn't mean that everything stops. Everything still is very active and everything is still very moving. <clears throat> but it's just in an infinite way. <clears throat> what that means, we have no idea. This is basically what's going to happen in the raising of the dead. By, at Mount Sinai, there was the raising of the dead. It says that everybody died when they heard the words of God and that they, their souls came back. It's in the, what is it, the 36th chapter of the Tanya? Huh? We're at the end of the 36th chapter of the Tanya. It says that the same, this happened when they... 637 what can I do? <clears throat> that's right, 36 chapters, John. That's right. <clears throat> 36. The end of the chapter says that the Jewish people they, they died. That, that says that they died and their souls left. That's in the, in the Talmud in, in in Shabbat. But that the the and God brought it back with this dew. He says that's something like the raising of the dead. It's going to be Mount Sinai. That's what it means. That the mountain was smoking, full of smoke. Ashan, what is smoke? Smoke comes when fire grabs onto something physical. That the smoke comes up. What smoke? Smoke is the the physicality of the thing goes up, right? It's little pieces of physical wood or whatever you're burning. It flies up. Kach al derech mashal. So it is also safkos nafish abamis that the the natural souls and traits of all the Jewish people, which were under nature. <clears throat> was transformed. His hapchus was transformed the natural souls of all of the Jews to holiness. This is called ashana. This is called smoke. Now there's the whole entire natural physical world somehow or other became a vehicle, a vessel for the essence of God. Teva the nature of smoke is that it goes up when when it gets close to fire. Hamadlik. It grows. <clears throat> which lights and holds on to that which is holding on to the fire. But the Varsha Asun Yotzimi Menu. So, what, what has a work fire? How does it work? Smoke, right? There's fire. Fire touches the wood. The wood holds on to the fire, keeps it burning. And it eats up the wood and elevates it so that the wood suddenly becomes, how do you say, particles. That's smoke. Also, this whole mountain of Mount Sinai was full of smoke. Why? Was Hamshachas Kolos, it because of the drawing down of these voices and the fires, which we said that was Rotzevashuv going and coming back. That comes from holiness. The fire we know goes up. What's the voices that something is holding the fire down <clears throat> in the world? As we said that the voices are coming down. That's what it means. The people saw and they all shook. Um, what do you mean? And the, the people, and there's the Jewish people, their natural natures, their physical <clears throat> traits suddenly became spiritualized, elevated. Why? Because of the fires and the voices. The voices is what kept them in the world. The fire is what elevated them. That's going back and forth. It says that's why the people saw and they shook. Um, this is what's talking about in the beginning. It says all the people saw the voices. This is talking about the Jews. Oh, we'll say for what it says in the end that the people they just shook. Right? They 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 say they, they retreated 
This is talking about the era of Rab. This is talking about the mixed multitude. Shaloya Roim at the Kolot, they didn't really see any of this business. They just stood far away. Okay, there were two types of Jews that went out <clears throat> from Egypt. They were Jews that were Jews. Their parents were Jews. They were direct descendants from Jacob, from the 12 tribes. But then there were Jews that made a quickie conversion. Right before they left, they made a, they were called the Arab Rab, the mixed multitude. Not to mean that this is an, a, an invalid conversion. <clears throat> it was valid. Moses did it. Can't get a better judge than that. <clears throat> but it was a bit of a mistake because they made trouble for the Jews all the time. <clears throat> the reason that they converted was not for genuine reasons. But the law says that if a person converts for the wrong reasons and he goes through the whole process, then that's it. He's converted. He can't go back. So it says these people, they were called the Erev Rav. They was called the, the mixed multitude. Erev means mixed up and multitude. And it says these people weren't, they, they, externally they were Jews, but internally they were not. A Jew internally is a person that he can really deeply appreciate and long for God himself. A non-Jew doesn't have this ability. Non-Jews are not stupid. They can look at the Jews and they can understand that they're making a mistake, that there's something more to it than what meets the eye. <clears throat> but still, it only meets the eye by the non-Jews, and the Jew can feel it. Even though the Jews, <clears throat> sort of unlike the non-Jews, they can really be stupid. I mean, they can really see and feel. Here we see all the Jews they had this amazing experience that we're talking about. And 40 days later, they worshiped the golden calf. So, okay, that's pretty stupid. <clears throat> Let's back to our subject. Ubir in Hine, kolot, these, what do we say? These voices, we said before, this is drawing down of godliness. Hainu, and this is that they saw the voices. Hainu, Masha, or in so that which the infinite light of God on Mount Sinai came down and was revealed and what is but all a love and that which is negated to him. Like we said, the fire, fire grabs on to wood. It has to be combustible. The Jewish natural soul is combustible. The Jewish natural soul is a conductor. It can hold on and perceive this godliness of the voice, said the voice, this revealed godliness coming from above to below. This comes from what? The fact that the soul, <clears throat> the Jewish soul, is affected, affected very deeply, and the Jewish heart is affected very deeply by God Himself. Because the soul is created, and the soul is limited, as so forth, therefore, the Jewish soul, because on one hand it has the ability to perceive godliness, but on the other hand, because it, it's it's just a creation. So therefore, it gets very, very <clears throat> it gets very, how do you say, uh, moved by godliness, which is not limited. And no thought can grasp God. This is <clears throat> this is the level of God's voice, the drawing down of godliness, unlimited into limit. So the Jewish people, they saw these voices and they became very excited. They were like smoke. Their soul was combustible. It was made, the Jewish soul is made of a material that the voice of God can light it up, ignite it, make smoke. But these people who made the quickie external conversion, they did not have this excitement, made born by thinking into the greatness of God in himself. For instance, 
Ikri itpalu chalem, who should meet palim, me halicha zegalgalim. What do they get excited about? The air of Rav. Sometimes they're called a sapsuf. These people, they didn't really have Jewish souls 100%. They saw that things were good, so they left with the, together with the Jews. But they didn't really get the inside of what was going on. What They can't get excited about the essence of God. What did the Yesit get excited about? The greatness of God, how the stars move around in the sky, <clears throat> how, they, they, how infinitely great the stars are. Shogodl kolkach ve'enze ela bechines yesh. They can get excited about what God does, or even more, they can get excited about how the Jews get excited. But from getting excited about God Himself, she'en lo sof. It's unlimited. A Jew can't. Only Jews can really get excited about this. Unfortunately, they're not too excited nowadays. But they can get excited. Lonim shach lehem is palus klal. There is by the, the essence of God, the erev rav doesn't get excited at all. Therefore, it says erev rav. <clears throat> Therefore, the the erev rav, this mixed multitude said, Elokim asher yelchul lefanenu. Let us make gods that can go in front of us. They're the ones that made the golden calf. They saw with a physical eye. So it says also with the sin of the golden calf that it was mainly this era of Rav that they made it and that they worshipped it. And the other Jews, the Jews that worshipped it <clears throat> were very few. But the Jews got punished because they didn't stop it. They stood by <clears throat> So here, what's the Rebbe saying? The Rebbe saying, this idea of the smoke going up, this is the natural souls of the Jews that felt and appreciated this revelation of God from the voices coming down, the torches going up, the sound of the shofar, which unites both of them. <clears throat> this was this inspired the Jewish souls to be like this level of Ashan going up. It says their souls jumped out of their bodies, which is not the case, the era of Rav, which is not the case, the mixed multitude, which they converted only <clears throat> to escape Egypt and to join with the benefit, get the benefits of the Jewish people, whatever. <clears throat> As those, those people, the this era of Rav, as they didn't get excited. They didn't get excited. They were not part of this Ashan of the smoke going up. As we're going to explain something very interesting tomorrow, but you know what? Maybe I'll explain it. No, no, we'll explain it, God willing, tomorrow. Let's now learn. <clears throat> okay, so what do we what do we explain here? What well, we started to say: the giving of the Torah was also giving of a revelation of the essence of God, and that revelation of the essence of God is present right now in the Torah. When a Jew learns the Torah with the proper attitude with the proper awareness, then maybe it can be that he'll also come to this level of ashan, like it says, ashan, of being elevated, <clears throat> his natural character traits become elevated to be godly traits. His natural perceptions include also that of the infinite creator in everything that we do. The Torah is what cleans our glasses. The Torah itself are the glass, the window, to see and to feel the infiniteness of God. But it's a feeling that's not a spiritual feeling. It's a feeling of, <clears throat> of um, life. Life. Like I said so many times, I, I can tell the story again, maybe another hundred times, and <clears throat> the Rebbe said in, a, in one of his speeches, why is it that people go to sleep? When a person goes to sleep, he's like a dead. It's the opposite of the whole reason we're created. We're created in order to serve God, to make this world a better place. When you're asleep, you don't make anything better. <clears throat> what do you do? You're totally out of it. You don't talk. You don't think. You can't react. You don't act. You can't build. <clears throat> you have no, no in connections with other people can't improve things. 
So the Rebbe said the only reason <clears throat> that we sleep is because when you sleep, you're usually not aware that you're asleep. Usually not. Once in a while, you know. And then, and so you're not, when, when you wake up, especially if you dream, you have a dream and you're asleep, right? You really think the dream is really real. And then you wake up, right? You say, whoa, I realized this whole thing was just a dream. Sometimes you wake up, you can remember your dream. Wow, it was only a dream, right? I thought it was so real. So the Rebbe said, if so, what does that mean? It means that human psyche, human <clears throat> uh, consciousness is susceptible to be fooled. And that you can live in a whole entire situation, world, where it's just a dream. And you really think that it's real. And when you wake up, suddenly you realize that it's a whole different reality. That you weren't really living real, real reality. So also a person can extrapolate from that. And maybe right now we're also just dreaming. And what we really think is real, right? The way we're interpreting everything, it's really not real. <clears throat> not to say that the world is subjective, like this, all these, whatever it is, quantum <clears throat> the psychiatrists say, or whatever it is, <clears throat> that the world is all in our mind. It's, of course, that's ridiculous. The world is not in our mind, but the way we interpret it certainly is in our mind. And also what we perceive of the world, right, is not, the, most of the, what we perceive is not in our mind. Most reality is not there. We don't see the reason behind everything. We don't see the godliness creating everything. So waking up simply means that we start to see the reality and the godliness and the creator and the true meaning, which is found in everything. And that, says the Rebbe, is, is present in the Torah. That's the essence of the Torah. That's what the Rebbe wants to say. Torah. Not by sitting on a mountain and meditating or saying some word over again or doing some sort of a psychiatric, whatever it is, psychedelic, meditastic the, the thing, right? Uh, the, the, it's a yoga, tantric yoga or something like that going on this. These all connect you to spiritual levels and put your psyche in, in how do you say, sync with certain spiritual things that are going on. So you have spiritual experiences. That's not at all what the Rebbe is talking about here. The Rebbe is talking about true reality, feeling the creator of all the psyche and the spirits and the, and the, and the, and the gods and the religions and the, this, feeling the source of everything. And that's in the Torah. And that began when God gave the Torah on Mount Sinai. And that was the whole idea of the voices. They heard the voices. That's God coming down. And the torches. That's God going up. That was at Mount Sinai. And the, the, that's the desire going up. And Ashan means the physicality also was elevated. That's only relevant to the Jews, but eventually it's going to be relevant to the whole entire world, that all the world will turn to the creator of the universe. And that's the whole amazing, miraculous <clears throat> power of the Torah. Now let's learn the Devar Malchut. <clears throat> 